Hi, Jen here. So I recently live streamed a bunch of paintings. I wanted to go ahead and split all of them into the individual mini series and scrunch down the timeline to make all of the videos more watchable for you. Um, so if you want to know how to paint these prehistoric plants with me, keep on watching. So to start off, I'm just showing the practice painting that I did at the very beginning of this series. It was a maidenhair fern. And then I'm showing the printouts that I had from the sketches that I did on my iPad where I just sketched the profile of the plant and then printed it out. Um, I used these printouts to trace the outlines onto my watercolor paper um, just to make it easier to get the shape right. So you can't see the pencil lines on the paper, but they're there. Um, I used a really hard pencil, a 3H. Um, and just, I find it helps to keep the pencil lines a lot lighter so that when you're done um, and you go to erase the lead, it's not as noticeable. Um, and here I'm starting to lay down that first base layer of color. Uh, usually when I go to lay down a base layer like this, I try to alternate between the pigments. Um, so like I'll have a couple of mixes going that are slightly different and I'll just keep alternating back and forth between those mixes to get variation in the color as it's applied to the page. And the water, you know, as, as long as the paint's wet while you're painting, everything will kind of bleed together and you get these really pretty blooms of color where the colors mix and the pigments kind of work their magic, if you will. The paints that I'm using are all from, oh no, I take that back, haha. <laughs> no, some of them are from Daniel Smith. Um, there are a few of them. And then uh, I, for, I'm also using a lot of the core watercolors. The Daniel Smith colors um, that I used are the Cascade Green and the Undersea Green, both of which are super granulating and really pretty. They have some really cool color shifts that happen. And then the core watercolors, um, let's see, I used cobalt teal and green gold. So once I get that um, first layer down, um, I kind of tend to go back over and any spots that just look a little weird, I'll take some clean water and just try to smooth out those spots so that the pigments really blend nicely together. And then here I'm just painting the um, little stem thing at the bottom of this ginkgo biloba. That's what this plant is. And gave that a little brown. Um, I believe I made that brown using um, some extra watercolors that I had on my palette at the time. Um, I don't re don't quite remember which colors I used. I think it was something like quinacridone gold and uh, some, some kind of purple. And then um, I, after laying down that first coat of paint, I realized that I wanted to add a little extra oomph. Um, the, the day that I ended up painting this, it was really dry for some reason. And so all of the paints kept drying really quickly, it made it really hard for me to get super smooth blends in my watercolors. So I looked at the large areas that I'd laid down and went, uh, I kind of need to cover this up. <laughs> so I decided to go back over everything with another layer and try to bring in some texture. These leaves have striations that um, go from where it connects to the stem all the way to the tip of the leaf in a fan shape. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here. And um, I went both from the stem and then I came back and 
brought down all of those stripes from the tip just to try to make those lines a little bit more even. And you can um, see me in the corner um, while I'm live streaming. I us I'm usually talking through everything that I'm doing and trying to give any helpful tips. I just find it, um, well, it, when I was getting started in watercolors, I always appreciated when artists had helpful tips that they would give while they were painting. I feel like it really made a difference in how I approached my art. And so here, I'm just continuing to add that extra layer of texture on top. I'm using a black velvet round size six watercolor brush. Um, it is by far my favorite watercolor brush and specifically the size six. Uh, this brush just has such a nice sharp pointed tip. I can make really small lines, but at the same time lay down a good amount of color with the belly of the brush. Um, so I feel like it multitasks really, really well. Here I'm just giving you a better close-up of the leaf, blah, excuse me, <laughs> of the plant so far. So you can see the details a little bit better. And then just getting to that last leaf. The uh, ceramic paint palette that I have to my left is the Meden ceramic palette. Uh, I can't remember specifically what this model was called. Maybe like a floral palette, something, something like that. As you can see, like it's a really interesting shape and I love it because it has all of these different sized wells. So you can kind of make up mixes in the different wells based on how much paint you think you're going to need. And since it's ceramic, it's easy to wash out, no problem. What you don't see off camera is I also have two containers of water. Um, usually what I do is when I have a lot of paint on my brush and I need to rinse, I'll dunk it in one, one container and rinse it off as best I can and then go into the clean water to go back into my watercolor paints. And that way I'm not muddying up the colors on my palette when I go to reach for uh, refilling my brush. I also have some paper towel up in the corner. Um, and I just use that to dab off any excess uh, paint or water that needs to come off the brush. Sometimes you'll go to lay it down and it's just like, whoa, that's way too much water. And then you have this giant puddle that you got to try to sop up with your brush. So it's just better if you're always kind of checking yourself and dabbing onto that paper towel. So uh, there's the finished ginkgo biloba. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, and so here I'm just talking through the fern branches that I'm going to paint and uh, just refreshing the memory on um, what those are supposed to look like, what that silhouette looks like. I'm using the same pigments that I used for the ginkgo, ginkgo biloba. Oh my gosh, say that five times fast. And just trying to alternate those colors as I fill in the shapes. Again, that uh, silver black velvet brush is really coming in handy. That nice sharp tip just makes it so much easier. Uh, the watercolor paper that I'm using is the Canson XL cold press watercolor paper. I find that it is a really versatile watercolor paper and a very affordable price point. Um, the tooth on it is not so extreme that you have to like be used to working with it. I think it's really good for beginners. Uh, there is, but there's also enough tooth that you can get multiple layers of watercolor without the paper really getting torn up. Um, I think there are definitely benefits to using it if you're someone like me who likes to um, immediately scan in your artwork and then use the digital version more than you use the actual um, original painted version. 
And by the way, if you didn't know this, the whole reason I did this prehistoric plant series was as a complement to the watercolor dinosaurs that I uh, previously painted. And I have a YouTube video of those paintings um, as well. So if you're interested in watching that, please feel free to check it out. I'll drop a card right around here in the video so that you can click on that. Um, also, if you're enjoying watching me paint and um, try out these different crafts and mediums and you want to go along this journey with me as I um, explore art and uh, try to get better at it, please give me a follow and uh, subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. My goal is to... Uh, start uploading some of my live streams on a regular basis uh, for anybody who's interested in coming back and trying to follow along in real time. Just as a warning, I know that at some point during this painting, the video of me doing the painting actually cuts out because my GoPro battery died. So there's going to be a blank screen coming up in just a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out all of the technical stuff. Um, I'm starting to get the hang of it, but, um, you know, it's it's tough being a mom to a toddler and working a full-time job and trying to pursue this uh, graphic design and art career because um, I went to school for architecture. That's what I do full-time. Yeah, it's just a lot. So bear with me. Thank you for your patience and thanks for, you know, sticking around uh, to this point and um, hanging with me. I hope to start streaming on Twitch soon um, for a lot of my craft projects. I just feel like uh, Twitch might be a good spot for me to try and do the live stream tutorials. I think there's already. Um, a decent sized community out there of people who are going on to Twitch looking for things to watch that, um, you know, will make them excited about trying to do things like paint watercolors or even digital illustration, crafting, whatever. I have so many ideas uh, saved up to try. I mean, I have this whole huge list saved over on my desktop here that I look at all the time and go, oh my gosh, when am I going to have time to do all of this? Ugh, I'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> Maybe when I'm retired. <laughs> I hope not. I hope I hope that um, this grows and with, you know, trying to grow my social media accounts and um, trying to license my artwork, potentially I can start making some money off of this and, um, uh, you know, start doing it more often. I really enjoy trying new things and um, bringing others along for the ride and trying to pass on any knowledge that I gain from it. So this last fern branch was pretty tricky because it's bent, so it has these overlapping leaves, and I was trying so very hard not to accidentally paint something that I shouldn't. I think I did okay. Um, I just had to really concentrate. And uh, in the video, like the live stream video, you can tell that I just like kind of get really quiet. Although I guess actually you, you wouldn't have been able to tell because the video cut out there <laughs> into that black box and that my GoPro was what I was using to record the audio. So the audio went away at that point as well. And I was just live streaming me painting with no sound whatsoever. But then again, I, I some people probably prefer that to listening to me talk um, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to just like mute this video and maybe watch the subtitles or something, um, the captioning, whatever you want to call it. 
I love the uh, variation in pigments that I was able to achieve in this particular painting and the maidenhair fern, which was that very first painting that I showed. Um, I think it just turned out really beautiful. The variation is really what makes watercolor so special. And there you go. At this point, I'm just going back in and smoothing out any areas where the texture of the pigment dried really funky or I felt like didn't blend well. Um, I'm kind of OCD like that. I know the beauty of watercolor is you got to just like let it dry how however it wants to dry. Just let it be. But um, I don't know that that's always true. Like watercolor is somewhat forgiving still and you can definitely rework it and get it to look closer to what you want it to. It just is a matter of practice. You can see I'm uh, being really picky, especially about that one area. I do remember there was quite a large bleed of color that I didn't like. So feel confident that I fixed it. And just double checking that everything looks good. And I think it does. So there are the final fern branches. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something and I'll uh, catch you next time. Bye.